the football team and in addition to being a uh, strength conditioning assistant strength conditioning coach with the football team so uh today i'm gonna be going through just some basics of our sports nutrition program and and what we do um how we gear things towards the football team and um really to to maximize performance here so i'm gonna go ahead and get started here with the presentation All right, so um, with how we do things nutrition-wise, um, you really have to look at nutrition, if you wanna look at it from a year perspective, um, looking at the number of training sessions that you're gonna take on as a football player during the season um, for one year is basically gonna be three to 500 training sessions the amount of times that you're gonna eat a meal or a snack is probably gonna be closer to 1,500 to 1,800 times. So 300 to 500 training sessions versus 1,500 to 1,800 meals or snacks, all right? That, that goes to show how important nutrition is and how much that can have an impact on your overall performance. Um, and so common misconception is that training that you do is gonna equal your muscle gain, the strength that you gain, how much faster you get, how much more powerful you get, and how much more quick. Um, quickness is just kind of a word for change of direction, agility, all those things. Um, but this is a very common misconception. This isn't to say that training isn't important. Um, training is a part of this, but just doing the training does not lead to muscle gain, strength, speed, power, quickness. Training is what actually breaks you down. And so the training is gonna break your muscles down and then how you recover with your nutrition dictates what you're gonna get out of that training. So it's really your training plus your nutrition is gonna equal how much muscle you're able to gain, how much strength you're gonna be able to develop, your speed development, your power, and your quickness. And, and so these two really go hand in hand. And, and really, nutrition is going to be bigger than the training, all right? And so the training is, is important, it's essential, but the nutrition is as well. So if you think about it from like a, a cell phone standpoint, this is just an analogy to understand that training is the stimulus. So training is basically like, sending a text message or a phone call, all right? If you don't answer that phone call with your nutrition, then you're not gonna get what you want out of the training. So the training is the initial stimulus. How you respond to that is, is with your nutrition and, and your recovery, and that's gonna dictate the gains that you're gonna get. Um, so here at, at SMU, we, we kind of have an acronym um, from a nutrition recovery standpoint. And it's really what you do with these six things. If you do these six things really well, you're gonna set yourself up for success to get better on a daily basis, all right? And so it's an acronym, the F means for feel like an athlete. Um, and that's where we're gonna spend most of the time today. Um, A is always know when and where. So always know when and where your meals and snacks are gonna come from every single day. Um, S is start with breakfast. Making sure you eat breakfast every single day is a good way to set yourself up for success. Um, the T is gonna be take hydration seriously. That's gonna be the quickest and easiest way to impact your performance. Um, and then uh, the E is gonna be every feeding contains plants or protein and protein. Uh, the plants being just fruits and vegetables. And then R is rest and recover and that's the sleep piece. Um, like I alluded to before, today we're primarily just going to talk about feel like an athlete and, and always know when and where. Because these are, like all six of these things are very important, but these top two are the most important things, and these are the things that we're going to spend the most time talking about, is understanding food, what's on your plate, how is this helping me, how is this potentially hurting me, and then setting up a schedule so that you always know when and where your meals or meals and snacks are coming from 
and where those are coming in and around training to make sure that you get the most out of your training. So what does it mean to feel like an athlete? So children eat for pleasure, athletes eat for performance. So what, what does this mean? So children, like a child is gonna be hungry and just say, I want this, I want McDonald's, I want uh, Skittles, all those things. They're, they're very much in the moment. They're just thinking about what they want at that moment. However, athletes, they have a responsibility to know that the food that they're eating is going to either hinder or hurt their performance. They're eating for something that's basically called delayed gratification. So delayed gratification is the concept of really what we do in athletics and in football is that you train year round for a very few opportunities. All right. And like I alluded to before with the training sessions versus meals and snacks, the amount of meals and snacks you're eating throughout the year, that's delayed gratification. Putting in the work every single day with your meals, with your snacks, is setting yourself up for gratification later on because you don't eat healthy once and gain muscle. You don't eat healthy once and get bigger, get faster, get stronger. It's something that you have to do day in and day out. So as much as we can to make sure that athletes understand that training and nutrition are like, they go hand in hand, they're synonymous. So that you're, you're, what you do in your training is just as important as your nutrition. Putting in the work every single day, just like you will in your training, is gonna give you the gains that you want. And so as an athlete, they have a responsibility to know food. It's their responsibility to be able to look at a plate, um, whether it's eating at home and preparing their foods or when they're going out to eat so that they can look at their, at their plate and understand this is what the protein's doing for me. This is what the carbohydrates are going to do for me. This is what the fat is doing for me. Is this enough of this to match what my goals are? So every single time an athlete eats a meal or snack, that is an opportunity for them to either recover from their previous training session and or fuel themselves for their next training session or competition. So how do, how do we teach athletes to feel like an athlete and, and understand what on their plate, what the things are on their plate and, and how those are helping them, all right? And so um, nutritionally, we get calories from three types of food, okay? That's protein, carbohydrates, and fat, all right? And our, our body breaks these things down and is able to derive them, derive the, the, what we need to produce the work, okay? It gives us the energy to do the work on the field, in the weight room, and to recover, okay? And so to look at things, to make things more simple, we look at protein, we want to think about protein as recovery, repair, rebuilding. Um, carbohydrates, we want to think about that as energy. Fat is also energy, and we want to think about it as health, all right? Um, we're not trying to get super scientific here, but it is important to point out. So per gram of protein and carbohydrates, there's going to be four calories per gram. On the other hand, fat, there's going to be nine, nine calories per gram. And so that's important to understand is that fat per gram is going to have more energy in it than protein and carbohydrates. All right. And then we're going to get into how these benefit the football players specifically. So we talked about protein is recovery, repair, rebuilding, all those things. So really the protein that you're eating, that is for recovery from high intensity activity. What do I mean by high intensity activity? Basically that's football. That's football practice, that's sprinting, that's jumping, all right, that's lifting weights. Protein is what you need to recover from those sessions because like we say before, we're gonna keep reiterating it, training breaks you down, all right? And protein is the primary thing that our body's gonna use to repair our muscles, all right? So carbohydrates, we wanna think about them, we said that they're energy. Primarily, they're energy for high intensity activity. So during football, um, it's a high intensity sport, all right? It's, it's fast paced, there's collisions, there's sprinting, uh, all those things. 
carbohydrates are going to be the primary source of energy for you to do high intensity activity. And that's just the way the human body works. Um, it, it's pretty conclusive from a scientific standpoint. Carbohydrates are the most efficient fuel source for us to do repeated sprints, repeated jumps. Um, any type of repeated explosive activity, you're going to be primarily relying on carbohydrates. All right, fat also provides us energy, but just the way that the body works, it's primarily going to provide us energy for lower intensity activity. So if you want to think about a football play, carbohydrates are going to be providing you the fuel for when you are sprinting, but when you're going about the play, and then the time in between plays when your heart rate comes back down and you're walking back to the line of scrimmage or you're walking back after a sprint or you're resting in between a set of squats or a set of cleans, fat is going to take over and provide more energy for that low intensity activity. It takes longer and it, it's, it's a, a longer process for us to use fat as energy. So that's why that fat piece works better for your low intensity activity you're able to get carbohydrates quicker into your muscles to do the work that you need at higher intensities. So that's why we want to think about carbohydrates as energy for your high intensity activity. So first thing we're going to talk about going more depth on is protein. All right. So protein is going to be the biggest thing that we want to hammer home with our athletes, because whether you're trying to lose some body fat or if you're trying to gain muscle, protein is central to both those because you do not want to lose any of the muscle that you have. Typically, you want to be building more muscle or building the muscle that you already have to be stronger, okay? And so that's why it's essential whether you're trying to lose fat or gain weight, protein is central to that. If you don't eat enough protein, then your body is not going to have enough materials to repair and rebuild your, your muscles. So where do we get protein from? Primarily, we're going to get it from things we call animal sources. And it makes sense because our, our muscles are actually basically made up of protein. So eating the proteins from animal sources is going to be the best sources for us to build those things back up. So what are animal products? Animal products is basically anything that comes from an animal. So the easiest examples to think about are meat, all right? meat and fish, um, eggs, dairy, any type of dairy, that's your milk, that's your yogurt, that's your cheese, all those things, all right? In addition to that, protein shakes, protein powders and protein shakes are basically derived from dairy products. So those are high quality animal sources as well. Now we don't wanna just rely on protein shakes for all of our protein intake because there's a lot of other good things, vitamins, minerals, and, and so on and such forth that we're going to get from um, meat and fish, eggs, dairy, those things, all right? There are small amounts of protein in stuff like grains, so like breads, um, rice, pastas, beans, and nuts. However, um, it's not as much, not nowhere near as much as there are in our animal products. And the, the protein that's in them is something that's called incomplete. So that means it doesn't have all the amino acids that we need to build muscle. So eating grains, beans, and nuts alone is not gonna give you all the protein that you need to repair and rebuild your muscle, all right? So looking at serving sizes for protein. Um, typically, an easy way to do it, if you're looking at just purely from like a meat standpoint is if you look at the size of the of your palm, uh, a, a, a serving of meat that is about the size of your palm, maybe the width of a deck of cards, or like the old iPhone one, that is going to be about one serving of protein. And we'll get into how many, how much athletes need, but but basically every time an athlete eats a meal, um, specifically a football player, they're going to be looking at trying to get two to three servings per meal. And if it's more of a snack, you're gonna want one to two servings per snack, all right? And like I said before, protein is essential for weight gain or weight loss. It helps you hold on to the muscle that you already have, or it helps build the muscle that you have, or 
it takes the muscle that you already have if you're trying to lose some body fat and maybe you make the muscle that you already have stronger all right and so when we talk about protein we want to specifically emphasize lean protein so what, it, what does lean protein mean lean means that there's less fat and so if there's less fat then there's less calories and there's more protein all right so the example we can use here is um, bacon versus uh, chicken breast. So bacon um, is something that's going to be um, higher in fat, all right? It, it's, it's basically the fatty cut from a, from a pig. And so you can get the same amount of protein from a chicken breast and bacon, but it's going to be a lot more calories. So this example right here, Typically, it would take four strips of bacon to have the same amount of protein that you get in a chicken breast. And you can see down there, we're not going to get obsessive about calories with the football players because at the end of the day, you have to meet um, the amount of calories that you're burning in your sport. But a chicken breast is going to be a better option because it's less calories and it's going to be more protein. And then you can use those extra calories that you would have used on a bunch of bacon. Um, you can use that for fat and we'll get more in depth on the importance of fat, but more healthier options of fat that are gonna support your health and your recovery a little bit better. Now, this isn't to say that bacon is bad and we should never eat bacon, um, but if you're relying primarily just on bacon for your protein at your meals, you're gonna end up eating probably more fat than you probably should be. All right. And then obviously nothing's as perfect as always just eating chicken breasts or always eating a lean cut of steak. So what this is showing is just like protein equivalent. So like one scoop of protein powder is going to be about the same as a chicken breast. If you're looking at Greek yogurt, about typically two to three Greek yogurts, depending on the brand with this one right here, um, it's going to be two Greek yogurts is about one serving of protein. From a milk standpoint, three glasses of milk or three cartons of milk is gonna be about one serving of protein or one chicken breast. And then um, using the example of eggs, about three to four eggs, you don't have to get like super detailed and in the weeds about it, um, but just, just understand that typically about three to four eggs is gonna be about one serving of protein or about three to four slices of cheese or cheese sticks is gonna be about one serving of protein. Um, but this is also beneficial in that we don't wanna just eat one source of protein. So if you're at a meal and you have a chicken breast and I'm trying to get two, two servings of protein, maybe I'll have a chicken breast, a Greek yogurt, and two glasses of milk. And that will give me my two servings uh, of protein that I'm looking for. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at is, is carbohydrates, okay? And like we talked about before, carbohydrates are going to be your primary source of energy for your high-intensity activity. Carbohydrates are going to support all the work that you're doing in your training primarily, all right? And, and the way we break carbohydrates down is we look at them in, in, in two different ways. We can look at them as training or workout carbohydrates and meal carbohydrates. So training, workout carbohydrates, these are carbohydrates that we're gonna eat before or after training. Uh, why we wanna eat these before or after training? Typically, these also might be referred to as simple carbohydrates. What does that mean? It means that they are pretty much completely broken down. So that means that when we take them in, it's a lot easier for our body to digest them and use them for energy immediately, all right? They don't have stuff like fiber that's gonna slow their breakdown and, and their digestion, all right? They're, they're simple and typically the sweeter something is, and this isn't always the case, but the sweeter something tastes, the more likely that's gonna be a workout or training carbohydrates because all carbohydrates are is, is sugar at the end of the day. Um, when you're looking at a meal carbohydrates, it's a lot of sugars um, bound together, but in the workout carbohydrates, they're very simple, they're broken down, they're able, we're able to get those into our body quickly. Now, having said that, 
our workout carbohydrates. We also want to think about things that sit easy on the stomach, okay? So if you look at the bottom of this table, fruit we have as a workout carbohydrate and a meal carbohydrate. Is a fruit sweet? Yes, okay? So that's why you would be like, okay, it's a workout carbohydrate. But you can have it at meals too. We want to eat as much fruits and vegetables as we can. Why does it work as a workout carbohydrate? Because a lot of times, yes, you want to eat simpler things, but it's also important to eat things that are easy on your stomach, that aren't going to give you issues with your stomach while you're training. And typically, like a banana or apple is actually pretty easy on our stomach. Um, and if we want our athletes to be eating as much fruit as possible, we want to encourage them to incorporate fruits into their workout carbohydrates, all right? Oatmeal is another example. Oatmeal is something typically we want to eat more at meals, but a lot, of, a lot of our athletes like eating oatmeal before they train, and that's fine. It's going to take a little bit longer to digest, but it's very easy on the stomach. It's kind of bland. It's, it's not going to cause a lot of GI problems, so that's where oatmeal can fit in as, as a workout carbohydrate as well. And then why we want to emphasize meal carbohydrates at meals is these things are going to have a lot more vitamins, minerals, and fiber, and things that are good for us as athletes to consume at meals. And we want to get these things in at meals because they're also going to be a little bit more filling. Uh, it's a lot easier to overeat the sweeter workout carbohydrates because they're, they t they're a lot easier to digest. And so it, we're not going to spend as much time breaking them down. So they're easier to overeat. It's hard to overeat on sweet potatoes. It's hard to overeat on a regular potato, on rice, on, on pasta, and those things. So in and around workouts, you want to hit your workout carbohydrates hard. And then the further you get out from a workout, the more that your meals and plates should be uh, compromised primarily of your meal carbohydrates. So what do, what do servings of carbohydrates look like? Um, like we're using the hand example, typically like one cupped handful is going to be um, about one serving of carbohydrates. And at meals, you want to be shooting for two to four servings per meal. Uh, at snacks, you're looking at consuming more about one to two servings per snack, okay? And so um, for weight gain, guys, they're going to want to eat more carbohydrates. For weight loss, you're probably going to be eating a little bit less. And, and I'm not saying don't eat carbs at all if you're trying to lose weight. Um, but it's just a, a general rule of thumb for weight gain. You need to eat more food than you're burning. And we want to do that through eating carbohydrates, a, a lot more carbohydrates. And then the weight loss, a way to basically with weight loss is you are going to be burning more than you're taking in and trying to induce a little bit more energy intake. You would try to eat a little bit less carbohydrates. Uh, and then the last thing we'll talk about are, are fats. Okay. Fats are, is, it's a kind of a complicated deal. Um, in terms of uh, what they do for us as athletes. Um, but primarily, you need fat to absorb vitamins. There's certain vitamins that we take in that we can't absorb into our body unless we have it with fat. Um, hormone production. So making sure you get enough fat is essential for our hormones to function, specifically with a football player, that's your testosterone. If you don't eat enough fat, um, you will not produce testosterone at the level that you want as a football player. Um, and it also, we talked about it's energy for your low intensity activity. All right. So fats have a huge health impact and it also can provide us some energy for low intensity activity. Um, but having said all that, there is a lot of fat already in our diet, especially when you're eating out a lot of those foods are cooked in oils and so you're going to be getting enough fat it's not it's not that hard to get enough fat as as an athlete as an american the way that you typically eat you're probably going to be getting enough fat so we talked about it's important to get enough fat for hormone production but just eating pretty normal you're going to get enough fat 
Um, so where are the sources of fat? Fat's in a lot of different stuff. So our oils, so that's like any type of oil, olive oil, canola oil, all those things are sources of fat. From uh, nuts, seeds, your peanut butters, almond butters, cashew butters, those are all sources of fat. Butter, um, cheeses, and full fat dairy, like whole, whole milk, it's whole milk because it, it, may, it has more fat in it than a skim milk. A skim milk, they take all the fat out of it. Um, avocados are another good source of fat. And then fattier cuts of meat. So the more greasy something is, probably the more fat it's going to have in it. And so we talked about before, with, when we were talking about comparing how much bacon you'd have to eat to equal one chicken breast, um, you have to understand that um, we would rather get fat from things like olive oil, avocados, nuts, and seeds, because those have a lot of beneficial things for our health. And if you're using all your fat on stuff from meat, you're not getting the, those beneficial things. So it's better to be eating a chicken breast and then maybe having some avocado or having a salad with olive oil on it and those things. And that way you're getting the benefits because some fats just really aren't as, more, aren't as beneficial to us as athletes. Um, this is just kind of a chart that is kind of going over what all food choices and portion sizes are and just kind of review. We talked about, we were just talking about fat. So with fat, um, what's a fat serving size? Typically like a small handful of nuts, um, half an avocado, a tablespoon of um, any of your oils, a tablespoon of butter, or like a tablespoon um, of like uh, peanut butter or almond butter. Um, and so that's typically like a serving of fat, all right? Depending on the athlete at a meal, if like the protein is, if it's like a, a lean chicken breast, if everything's lean and the food's not cooked in much oil, then you're gonna wanna be looking for about one to three servings of fat per meal. Um, and then moving over far back to the left, kind of review with protein choices. Um, typically we look at it at like a palm or an old iPhone. If you're looking at strictly meat, um, eggs and milk, we talked about, um, about three to four servings of those is one protein, uh, Greek yogurt, typically about two cheese, about three, like a core power or a scoop of protein powder. That's all one, um, veggie choices. Typically, veggies aren't very high in calories or carbohydrates. So those are things that we just want the athletes to eat at every single meal if they can. And then moving over just to review with, with the meal with the meal carbohydrates, typically about um, one medium potato or sweet potato, one piece of fruit or a cupped handful, oatmeal, rice, pasta, one cup serving or a cupped handful. That's about one serving if we're looking at breads or tortillas. It's typically about two slices of bread or one tortilla is going to be a serving of carbohydrate. Um, and then with the workout carbohydrates, typically any type of fruit snack, cereal, um, fruit, like a 12-ounce Powerade, those are all examples of what would be like one carbohydrate choice. So the big piece, we were just talking about understanding food and feeling like an athlete. Um, the next piece in that is always know when and where. So how do we put that into practice and, and know when to eat what, when to eat our workout carbohydrates, protein, all those things. So in this example, we're looking at a day where you're looking at someone training in the morning. All right. So um, if someone's training in the morning before their warm up or before the conditioning, you want to try to get one to two workout carbs in. What, is that, what does that look like? That could be a fruit, um, a bar, or a PB&J. Um, and then we would optimally like to get some protein before we train so that we're already starting to have some protein digested to help us repair our, our muscles when we're going about the training. Uh, with the protein, though, you, sometimes protein doesn't settle well with people's stomachs. Um, and so I put the example as a Greek yogurt in here. Um, as a Greek yogurt um, is typically gonna be easier on someone's stomach. So if you can get that in before you train, that would be optimal. 
Um, but if it messes with your stomach, then you probably just take the protein out and get your workout carbs and get your protein through the rest of the day. Um, and then say the athletes do an on-field work and then they come in and lift afterwards. Um, before they lift, they probably want to get one to two more workout carbs in, maybe some more fruit, a bar, or PB&J. Um, and then optimally, maybe a protein shake. Um, while they're training or before they're training, if it settles well with their stomach. Then post-lift is going to be your first real meal of the day. That'd be like a, a typical breakfast we look at is something like um, an omelet. All right. We put bacon on here. Um, we're not getting all our protein from bacon, um, but it's okay to get a little bit from it, especially because you're getting a good source of protein from the omelet. Um, for your meal, carbs maybe some pineapple, uh, oatmeal, and then for fruits and veggies, you're looking at maybe getting a smoothie in there, or if you're getting an omelet, maybe getting extra vegetables in that omelet. And then moving on to your lunch, um, some sort of burger, sandwich, or burrito um, for your protein. Um, and then you're gonna be getting carbohydrates from the bread on the burger, sandwich, or burrito but then probably need to get a little bit more. So maybe some, uh, some sort of potatoes, rice, or fruit, and then trying to get some vegetables in there as well. So some sort of salad. Uh, and then moving on, dinner would look like something, a couple chicken breasts, maybe some pasta and a salad as well. And then before bed, you'd like to get another snack and um, something simple, something that's really easy, something that's not going to be a strain for you to put together right before you go to sleep. And so in this example, it would be something like a protein shake and maybe a PB&J or a piece of fruit. Um, taking this a little bit further, we're looking at someone that's really trying to gain weight. Um, we're going to try to up their carbohydrates a little bit more. So um, a great window to get more carbohydrates in is during the pre-during training session. Um, you're able to maybe drink some Powerade. That's a quick and easy way to get a little bit more carbohydrates in, maybe some applesauce. Um, a lot of the same stuff we talked about before. Um, the only difference here is someone that's going to be gaining weight, they're going to have a little bit more leeway to eat foods that maybe might be considered a little um, more quote-unquote unhealthy. But at the end of the day, the weight gain, weight gain athlete is, is trying to consume more energy than they're burning. And so in order to do that, sometimes you have to eat some foods that are easier to overeat. So foods that are easier to overeat are things that typically have carbohydrates and fat in them. So if you look at the uh, post-lift meal, we have pancakes with um, syrup and stuff in that. So syrup, maybe a little bit of butter, you're able to get a little bit extra calories in there. At lunch, we have French fries with ketchup. The French fries are not the best um, choice as an athlete, but they, they are potatoes, but then they're fried, so they're gonna have some added fat, a little bit extra carbs with the ketchup, and, and those things. Um, this is just an example of like some typical breakfasts um, that, that we would have with our athletes, you know, post-training session. You see there, they have some eggs, that's about three eggs. They have some breakfast meat there. Um, they got a serving of carbohydrates with the fruit. They got a serving of carbohydrates with the oatmeal. And then they have a serving, another serving of carbohydrates with the fruit that's in the smoothie. So if you look at that, that's about two servings of uh, protein. Um, and then between all the carbohydrates there, that's about three servings of carbohydrates there. That, that's, a, that's a typical breakfast for an athlete post-training. Um, the other picture on the right, pretty similar. You have an omelet with some veggies in it, some breakfast meat, uh, a breakfast sandwich, a serving of, of fruit there with the pineapple, a serving of carbs um, with the oatmeal, and then another serving of carbohydrates with the uh, smoothie there. All right, and then one other last piece before we wrap up here, um, you're looking at um, eating out, okay? So we know that a lot of your meals aren't gonna be prepared at home. A lot of times athletes are on the run, they're going to class, they have a lot of stuff going on. So like what, what choices do I make when I'm eating out? Typically, like we talked about before, you want to 
choose leaner protein options because they're gonna have more protein in them. And when you, you wanna use those other calories that you would have used if you would have used them on fattier cuts of meat or fattier food for stuff like fruits and vegetables, healthy oils and fats and those things. So the top left examples like a Subway or any type of sandwich shop, like a foot long sub plus a piece of fruit, that's gonna give you all the protein and carbohydrates that, that you need as an athlete. Um, looking over on the right, a couple different examples of Chick-fil-A. So when you're going to fast food options, um, you're typically gonna be looking at having to make choices of fattier foods. And so what we wanna try to get the athletes to do is if they choose a fattier option, like if they really want the French fries, then they should probably get a grilled chicken sam sandwich instead of a fried one and also get a side salad as well so they're getting some vegetables in there. If they're really dead set on getting the fried chicken sandwich, then they probably shouldn't get the French fries. Instead, they should get like a side of fruit and a side salad, all right? And then the, the last example, the bottom left corner um, is just a burrito. I, any of your like Cadoba, Chipotle, those things, um, can be a great source of a meal for an athlete because you're able to get rice and the tortilla are gonna be your meal carbohydrates. And then um, and your steak, your chicken, those things that you get in the burrito, um, some beans, that's gonna give you your protein. And then a lot of times at, at your Chipotle's or Cadobas, you can load up on the vegetables. You can get uh, fajita vegetables, the salsas, uh, and then maybe some avocado. Um, or guacamole in there, and you're able to get some healthy fats. Um, so these are just a, a couple different examples of, of what look, eating out for an athlete might look like. Um, and then that'll be it for today. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to email me, um, Ryan Jackson at smu.edu. Any sort of sport nutrition questions that you have, um, shoot away, send me an email and I can respond back and, and, and help you out and um, give you ideas and, and all those things. Cause I, I know this isn't everything that has to do with sports nutrition.